Hi guys, the Strength Curry here with you today. Um, we're gonna talk about neck pain and how we can go about uh, both treating the condition and managing it at home. Now, I'm a certified um, chiropractor. Um, I graduated last year, uh, but prior to graduating, I was actually a remedial ma uh, massage therapist uh, for about three years. And um, there is a lot of things that I learned, not, not only as a therapist, as a massage therapist, but also through through um, chiropractic school and outside the chiropractic school that I'd like to share with you today um, to kind of give you a um, some of the some of the resources that you may need to um, help yourself when it comes to that neck pain. So we're going to get through go through some of the things that we can do. So the first thing we need to kind of look at is is um, I'm going to say the word posture. Okay. Um, when it comes to posture, there there is a lot of misconceptions. Um, I'll first I'll first off say that uh, posture is very very subjective and it is very different from person to person. Um, anatomically and and even biomechanically, we are all built very very differently. And the um, the A plus ten out of ten posture that you see a lot of uh, celebrities have where you know, obviously they got their chest up and their head nice and neutral and, and straight on their shoulders there. That's not necessarily uh, the posture that um, everyone has or everyone will have. So uh, that's the first thing I wanna just kind of um, point out there. Um, so when it comes to posture per se, I, as I talk about and how I relate to it is, does a person have access to ranges of motion from either end of the spectrum. When they do not have access to that full range of motion, that is when problems occur, guys, uh, because the body will not be able to utilize um, the best positions for different activities, okay? It's because it can't necessarily access that range of motion. An example, for example, say I'm working on the computer, I, I work at a desk job eight, eight hours, five days a week, and say uh, my chair is slightly tilted like this, so to the right, and I'm constantly looking at my screen a little bit on the left. So this fixation will create um, compensations through the neck and, and through the head. And basically our muscles will adapt or form over time to that specific um, range, okay? So that would mean that I will have excess range looking to the left, but I might have, I will have restriction to the right. And that creates a lot of problems because say where that person goes on, on a drive, they drive into work or they're crossing the road. Now the problem becomes that when there's a car or there's some sort of danger in front of them, they won't be able to access rotation to the right. And that's where it becomes a problem. That's the way I like to talk about posture is that we need to access uh, both one end of the spectrum to the other end of the spectrum to utilize that full range of motion through the neck, okay? So let's go through some of these exercises. So the first one is generally just increasing range of motion and there's a few ways we can do this. One of the most simple ways is literally just utilizing range of motion naturally. So moving our head through rotation what we wanna do is also keep this nice and stiff, or not stiff, but just kind of anchored, all right? We can even hold the bottom of our chair if you have a chair, and literally just rotating the head, okay? Just like that. And we can also go through some flexion and extensions, which is another action of, of the cervical region of our neck, just like that. And lastly, we can do some lateral flexion. So literally all that is, is side bending like that, just like that. So first guys, when it comes to that prolonged posture, we just need to increase our, or improve our movement diet through our neck. So literally moving through all those ranges of motion, rotation, lateral flexion, flexion and extension is really, really gonna help uh, with that muscle tension and the neck stiffness. But the second thing we, we can also do is literally, um, we can do some uh, release work through our muscles on our neck. So literally just grabbing our hand, putting it on some of the tight areas and flexing and extending whilst we hold some of those tight areas on the neck. I'd probably say even, you know, do five minutes worth on either side of the neck, find a few areas, 
hold that specific point where we have a bit of pain or tension for about one minute. Um, and that should uh, also free up a little bit of um, movement in the neck. And the last thing we need to do is actually do a little bit of strengthening. And there's a lot of ways to, to do some strengthening. I'm gonna be as simple as I can in this video. The first way we can do is just called doing isometric exercises. Now, isometric exercises, simply put, is we're gonna push against something without moving the thing that's pushing, okay? I hope that makes sense. For example, if I were to do the exercise right now, this is just uh, an exercise I would give to a, quite a lot of people actually at the start, um, is I'll put my hand, or I'll, I'll get them to put their hand on the side of their head, and then I'll get them to push into my hand for about 10 seconds. And this is what we call an isometric lateral flexion. And then I'll get them to do on the other side as well, isometric lateral flexion as well. And then also um, we'll get them to do some extension as well, some resisted extension in isometric position, pushing against a, those hands, 10 seconds. And this is just for demonstration purposes. Obviously I'm not doing the full 10 seconds. And then we'll get them to push forward as well, like that. So some resistive flexion isometric through the neck as well. And as um, we progress over time, I'll, I will get someone to actually move a little bit more dynamically. So um, doing what we call concentric and eccentric strengthening of the neck. So here I have a band and I'm gonna do what we call a chin tuck. And usually with the chin tuck, um, I'll regress a little bit, but I like to first do isometrics with the chin tuck. So it's similar to the extension, except we're gonna use this chin tuck position. I'll show you from the side and literally pushing like that. And I might get them to do that for the first week or two weeks, depending on um, how severe that neck pain is. Uh, but we'll move in, potentially we'll, we will move into what we call eccentric and concentric strengthening. So I've got a band, I'm gonna demonstrate a chin tuck first. So literally all it is, is this will go behind the head, getting a bit of tension there. And then we're doing some chin tucks, just like that. Just like that. And I would usually go for higher reps with these types of exercises. So anywhere from 10 to 15 reps, um, about three to four to even five sets uh, with those chin tucks. Now guys, the last thing I would do um, after we, we've kind of gone through the, what we call, um, another word is uh, for is isolated strengthening. So this is isolated strengthening, but there's another um, thing that we need to progress to, to to really help people adapt and get stronger through their neck muscles. And that is what we call closed chain loading. And it, particularly with the neck, it's really important to get to that point because a lot of the activities in daily life, we're doing things with our hands, we're doing things with our bodies, we're shutting doors, we're picking up babies. And what's happening in the neck is that there is, um, there is a closed chain loading through the neck uh, that occurs with all our movements. So it's really, really important that we actually train that closed chain loading. And what I mean by closed chain loading is that you're utilizing a lot of areas of the body at once, whilst also utilizing possibly an isometric um, contraction of the neck or eccentric concentric, such as looking at a car, maybe we're walking and we need to look, look around. Um, we need to really integrate that um, in order for that neck pain to really, really um, cease um, being there and for the neck to get stronger. So the ways that I would progress um, the chin tuck um, would be by utilizing gravity. So I would get into a four point stance and um, basically I'll just tilt the camera so you guys can see it. So tilting the camera like that, I'll get on the ground like this. So four point stance. And then what I'll do is get them to do a chin tuck in that position there. And this is closed chain loading because we're actually utilizing um, loading up through the shoulder complex, through our scapula, and then we're also performing that chin tuck. And we can progress this a lot of ways. We can do a bird dog. So a bird dog with a chin tuck, like that. 
we can do a plank with a chin tuck. And we can do maybe isometric instead of the concentric, um, you know, just moving through that movement. Uh, but there's tons of different ways we can actually start to strengthen the neck. We can even do a side plank with the chin tuck. Side plank, chin tuck. You can either do reps for it whilst also holding that chin tuck as well. Or we can even do some what we call prone, um, a little bit of isometric type strengthening as well. So that might look like you like this. Oh, hands like that. And then getting your, a person to lift up their head and their neck like a chin tuck and also utilizing that protraction of the scapula there. So yeah, guys, this is a quite a long intensive video, but I really wanna kind of share my knowledge with this stuff and um, hopefully you'll get a lot out of it. DM me, ask any questions, I'd, I'd be happy to answer them. All right, I'll see you guys later. Strength Caro, signing out.